Hey, a Netflix original action movie in January. Let's see how it goes. I like Falcon though. He's cool. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Outside the Wire is the brand new Netflix original film, and part of me was excited, part of me was hesitant, because we've seen things like this from Netflix before, uh, but I need you guys in the comments down below. Were you looking forward to this? If you like these Netflix reviews every single weekend, drop that thumbs up, and let's get into it. So, in the near future, a drone pilot sent into a war zone finds himself paired with a top-secret android officer on a mission to stop a nuclear attack. So, this is one of those movies that I, I think you just know exactly what you're going to get. You may not know the exact story progression or who these characters really are, but you understand that there isn't too much complexity to the story. Uh, it's a film that I think you can easily throw on, do other things, get away with it, come back in about 20 minutes later, and semi-understand what's going on. Now, you have to pay attention throughout the second half of the film because there are a few twists and turns in here that I did predict, unfortunately, so it is a very predictable movie, but I do expect some to watch this and have fun with it. Unfortunately for me, it is a film that I have seen so many times before, and I'm not just going to do the easy thing and make Terminator comparison. Okay, I am going to do that. It does feel a lot like Terminator, whether it be Terminator Jenny Smith or Terminator 3, it has that vibe to it, but that's okay, right? I don't expect every film to not go for something like that, this post-apocalyptic future featuring robots just because it's going to feel like Terminator. No, take a chance. Do something like that. And this director, Michael Hofstrom, director of 1408, which is actually a competent horror film, uh, does a good job at conveying the message of we're just kind of doing this crazy sci-fi action movie, a lot to enjoy in here. Uh, just kind of turn your brain off and soak in the madness. And I completely understand that mentality, especially on Netflix in January. But again, for me to judge this film, I, I have to be honest with you and tell you that I kind of checked out about halfway through the film. And I don't think it's because I checked completely out on the characters. It's more so I just knew exactly where the story was headed. And when we get to a very defining moment in the third act, one character decision in particular, that was kind of the moment for me. Is this going to do something different? Separate itself from a film that we've seen before and unfortunately... It was just not able to do that. And again, I'm an Anthony Mackie fan, right? I tend to, you know, support his work when others maybe aren't doing that just because he has a very specific style of acting. And he brings that here. He doesn't really do too much to impress, to be honest with you. It's more so because his character is kind of built around cliches for what he is. I'm going to make a training day comparison and... That's hopefully going to give you an idea of who these two characters are in Anthony Mackie's Leo and Damson Idris's Lieutenant Thomas Harp. Now, Idris is actually uh, a very competent actor. I loved him in Black Mirror. He doesn't do too much to impress in this film. And again, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt just because it feels like his character is just kind of spouting out the one-liners he's given, and especially in the third act when we get certain storylines wrapping up. It's just like, and some people are going to enjoy that. It just feels straight out of the 80s. It almost feels like a, a very high-budgeted B-movie, even though the special effects maybe aren't the best. But for the tone and the vibe that it's giving off, yeah, I guess they're pretty good. I just needed more emotion from Idris and his character. I, I needed something to uh, make me want to gravitate towards his mission, his goal. The reason he's sent out there is fascinating. We start this film off with a bang, in my opinion, getting a lot with his backstory. But the second he gets to that location and they start off on this mission, and we immediately pick up on those buddy cop vibes reminiscing back to films that we've seen before, the potential was absolutely there. But the story starts to teeter out, it becomes a bit stale, it falls flat, and I saw the majority, I'd say 80% of the twists coming, and that's just not something I can sit here and rave about. So I'm very curious, where did you all fall on Outside the Wire? We've seen a lot of Netflix movie like this. I've reviewed a lot in my day, and it always feels like the audience is, is split or 
everyone just kind of agrees the movie sucks. So where did you guys fall on this? At the end of the day, there is plenty of entertainment to be had, but the formulaic nature of the story progression hinders it from standing out in a very crowded genre. If you guys like these reviews, let me know. Drop that thumbs up. As for my score, it's a 45%, 4.5. I, I felt as if we needed more here and there and here and there and here and there, and it just kept going outside the wire, had so much potential within that first act, um, but it is a film that I personally needed more from. But again, this is your place and space to talk about this movie. Did you watch it? How did you feel about it? Is it the perfect way to start out 2021 for Netflix? All right, guys, appreciate it big time. I'll see you soon.